<laughs> and, and we have live. cats. <laughs> <laughs> and we're live. Welcome to another edition of the LinuxInstall.net podcast. My name is Brian Wagner. With me is my um, now trusty co-host who shows up on time, <laughs> Mr. Walt Giavec. Mr. Joseph Luzzi will probably be joining us any minute. I'm not really sure. He uh, he has gone AWOL on me. That's okay. Not the first time. So, uh, Walt, what you been doing with Linux this week? I've been playing with Pogoplug. <laughs> what have you been doing with Linux this week, Brian? I've been playing with Pogo Plug. <laughs> surprise, and, surprise. And, and fighting with stupid USB keys like this one. Yeah. I'm sure we won't name. But this, uh, yeah, we'll talk about this later. It's annoying. It's very annoying. It really sucks <laughs> when you when you have your Pogo Plug all set up. Luckily, I had more than one. Because if I didn't, I would have been toast. I don't know how I would have gotten it to work. Um, well, you should have been able to load um, from a Linux machine. Yeah, well, but I tried that. I, I, okay, but you well, tried it to the same stick. Oh, that's true. I tried it to the same stick, and I, I do believe this stick is, deflect, is deflective. Defective. Yes. <laughs> yes, on both accounts. I'm I'm going to pitch it because it's you know not really that expensive, and I don't want to grab it and go to use it for something critical and it screw up. It's only eight gig, so it's not like it's. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight gigs are cheap. Anyways, yeah, I've been playing with Pogo Plugs. So, um, Linux wise, that's really about all I. Well, Pogo Plugs, and uh, because of all the play with the Pogo Plugs, I got motivated to actually try and do something serious with my uh, with my Western Digital MyCloud. What? Uh, so, while I was waiting for these. <laughs> okay, here's. A little tip for everybody who's thinking about getting one of the wonderful Pogo plugs. Um, yeah, they're not fast. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go Tardash, ZXVF, and the Oh, image name, that's way too many letters for those plugs. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It just it takes forever. Forever. Not really that bad, actually. It's probably about 10 or 15 minutes. But um, that was 10 or 15 minutes where I, I had enough time to actually think that I should start playing with my my cloud, which I have currently disabled all of the uh, my cloud interface on. And hopefully, I didn't try it. You know, I should have tried that before I started spouting off, but I didn't try logging back into it after I rebooted it the most recent time. Um, because, well, nah, we'll try logging in later. Both my pies are working. But anyways, um, I actually tried to do an update on it, and I'm wondering if I really should have. I may be learning how to recover my, my cloud. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I saw plenty of websites on that, so maybe it's more common than you think. Yeah. Um, I did. I had already added the uh, Arch, or not the Arch, the Debian repositories. Oh. Because it's, it's running Debian. So I had already added the Debian repositories, and then I said, okay, update it. And so it was pulling all the patches. Oh, that's bad, yeah. And I'm thinking that was probably not a good idea. Yeah, no. Yeah, anytime you do those third-party repos, you just use them to pull in software. You never use them to do pull updates. Right. Well, I wasn't thinking before I hit the update button. And then it was after the fact, and it was like, hmm, a bunch of these failed. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> And luckily, they failed the right way. That's one of the things that you like about apt. If it fails, if you know, if it fails trying to install one of the dependencies, it doesn't try to install the new thing. So, I just didn't get updated, which hopefully will work. Everything will be backwards compatible. I hope. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, the only thing that that could be questionable would be the only thing I can use now to get in because I've disabled all the interfaces. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But it did come back up, so. I'm pretty confident it'll be okay. I think I was back into it after I rebooted it. I don't remember now. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I did. That and play with Pogo Plugs. And, uh, man, once you get it done, honestly, the, the steps, if you, if you do the Arch install, the steps are pretty brain-dead simple. They've, they've, got it, yeah. they've got it down. they got a good script. That's what, that's what most of the other ones don't have. Right. Uh, that install script is like... You know, key. 
Yeah, because I read through the instructions. I, I took your advice and I read through the instructions two, maybe three times for installing Debian and went, wow, I still don't think I understand exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> no, I've done it a million times and still don't know what exactly happens. I, I mean, I think I usually have an idea and then, no, nah, not really. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So, um, so I kind of stopped myself. I went, well, you know, Arch works, <laughs> and and it works so far. Um, I do want to do it, and the reason why, Walt and I talked about this last week, but the reason why we want to do Debian is because, for some reason, only the Debian team has figured out how to boot off of something like this so that I can actually use the SD card, or the, I'm sorry, the USB slot for what it was intended, which is storage. And I have a bunch of two terabyte storage disks laying around here that um, I just want to set up an NFS server and use for my OpenStack stuff to store images on and pull images from. Not that they'll be the fastest pull, but it'll work. It'll run. It'll run. There is actually a, a post on the Arch forums, the Arch, Arch Linux ARM forums, um, where the it's not necessarily the Debian team, it's one of the guys who prefers that distro um, got a U-boot that works. And the Arch team wants, because of their script, which is awesome, um, will they only use one U-boot on all of the devices, basically. Um, so no matter what you put it on, it's running the same thing, so you're guaranteed the OS is going to be looking for the same thing, and, it, and it's kind of uniform, which is very good, because um, more or less that's why the script works, and that's why you run exact same thing on no matter which version of the plug you have or any other ARM device. I mean, they have, what, 20, 30 different things on there that it works with. Um, but the downside of that is you don't get some of those customizations like being able to boot off of you know SD or um, SATA depending upon the device and, and such where you know the Debian team uh, or the guys that work on that a little bit because they don't have that script, you know, it's whoever figures out whatever they can figure out and get working, they get working, but it, it's definitely a little bit more chaotic. So uh, there is there is actually within the last month, which is funny enough, enough, enough people must have gotten these cheap that now it's, like, worth the devs to put a little effort into. Um, they're working on either making, and I, and I don't know all the different names, um, there's like the like Bodai and a couple other ones, but making one of the other U-boots either the new Arch one or integrating what they did into the Arch one so that it would actually be capable of, um, at least on our on this uh, Pogo Plug Mobile SD also. But but you can still do it. Um, there is a post on there. Basically, there's one or two boot strings you need to change in Arch on your USB stick. And once you change that so that it knows to look at the right path, you can you can actually boot off the SD. Um, you just have to you just have to follow a different set of instructions to get the new U boot on first. Okay. So it's so not it's not easy. Let's put it that way. No, it's <laughs> but it's easy. but it's doable. There's there's plenty of people who've done it already. But installing Arch on it literally was follow instructions. Do step A, step B, step C, step D. It was yeah. done. It worked. Um, which worked fine until, and this was my only problem that I've had this week, and this bummed me out and took me away from this because I had to troubleshoot this little guy who uh, seems to be a defective USB thumb drive. I've never had a defective USB thumb drive before, at least not one that hadn't been used and beaten and thrown in the bottom of my laptop bag and dropped my laptop on it a dozen times. But this particular one, for some reason, is only... Um, showing a, it's an 8 gig, but it's only showing a size of 7.8 gig right now. Whereas the second one, which I can't show you, but is pink, same looks exactly the same, it's just pink down here. Uh, that one, when I stick it into my wonderful Linux machine, says it is an 8.2 gig disk. So I'm suspecting that there's a set of whatever technologies on this. Yeah. Uh, failing. And I think that's probably the problem. The other thing, <laughs> I tried to do a disk image copy from the other one to this one just to see if I could get something on this to work. And because they're not the same size, you cannot do that. Well, right. not easily. Yeah. 
You can't take a bigger disk and put it on a smaller disk is the problem. Uh, right. You can, however, take a smaller disk and put it on. This is a 30, this is a 32 gig SanDisk drive that my wife got me a few years ago that are that were super cheap. They were like 10 bucks because it's only a USB 2. But you can put it on this, and then if you're smart like me, you can take the remaining space that isn't the 8 gig image that you started with, and you can format it and make it, uh, I don't know, slash home, which is what I did, so that uh, I have a space that as soon as I get in there and edit the FS tab file, I should have a mounting directory of, what would that be, like 20... Four? 24? Yeah, 24 yeah. gigs of um, space. Man. Something close to that. There's some formatting stuff, so it's going to lose a little bit of that, but something roughly akin to 24 gig of disk space on that one. And I have a second one that I wasn't using, so I'm going to use this one. And now that I have an image that I know works from the other one, the really cool thing about having the images is now I just have to image this and I don't have to go through the first couple of steps. Right. Because I already have the image. And um, <clears throat> the only thing I have to do is download the the install script and run it, and I'm done. Yep. Yeah, and backups and everything are easy. I mean, if you get a good working system, just image that mm -hmm. flash drive to another flash drive, and there's your backup. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the only, the only other thing I have left that I want to do is I really want to get the SSD working so, like I said, I can use one of my two terabyte um, spinning disks to connect to it for images. But <clears throat> given the extremely higher level of work, I skipped that. But I also bought another Pogo plug this week because, well, as we have been discussing, <laughs> damn things. I, I did some looking and I tried to figure it out and I just realized I can order this one for even less. Damn you, Amazon. Um, on Amazon right now, you can buy the Pogo plugs. Uh, is yours disconnected or do I have to grab one? Uh, which one do you want? I got all kinds. I got <laughs> the four mobile, the ones that I just got. They're now seven bucks. We had them. At, they're eight bucks on one site. They're seven bucks on on the Amazon site. Boom, bang, boom. There it is. Well, it's got to disconnect it. So that's that one. Oops. Only mine boots off SD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. And it has Debian on it, which... Yes, that's true. That's the caveat. That's the caveat. I haven't gotten around to doing the arch yet. So, um, so you can get that one that he just showed off, which is 698. Now, that doesn't have any... That's just... The one card slot you saw will show it off, and a USB port on the back. That's it. Yep. And then an Ethernet port. Um, the step up from that, which is also confusingly a Pogo Plug Series 4, yes. is that <laughs> really they needed to work on naming because Walt and I have been having this discussion this week. Um, what they're called and the price that they charge for it has nothing to do with what the hardware is inside. Just so that you're, when you're looking at things, just because it costs fifty bucks as opposed to ten, doesn't mean it has any different hardware in the ten than the ten dollar one. A lot of that has to do with the software that was included with it or is included with it. Um, I was doing some searching to try to see if Pogo, if the the people that make Pogo Plug, were going to continue making hardware. And I, it doesn't look good because they haven't released new hardware in two years. Right. Two years. Pretty much since their cloud service came out. Right. They came out with a cloud service and you can run the software on any PC, so I guess you don't need this device. I think they're kind of short-sighted though because there's this does serve a decent purpose. I can put all my yeah. stuff onto their device and then have it sync to the cloud, which is the way it was originally set up. Yeah, the... The, the honest truth behind that, um, for some of the multimedia and things that they market the device to do, A, you got to have pretty good up bandwidth to be able to do it outside of your home. And inside of the home, at some point in time, just because it is just a little arm box, um, you know, compared to some other options or uh, technology that's been out since, um, it is, like you, you even said at the beginning, it is slow. You know. 
Yeah, it's slow, and unlike a Raspberry Pi, I'm pretty sure, except for this one that says media sharing device, which is actually a specifically different machine, um, which I think is the one I just ordered. I don't know. I was confu- I'm confused. Um, but anyways, this media sharing device, I believe, actually does have an H.264 encoder decoder built into it. But there's only, like, one of them that does, and none of the Arch stuff even talks about whether or not it supports it because everybody else is using all the other ones that were were much cheaper. Right. Um, yeah, last I saw, that is not supported. Some of some of that, unfortunately, has closed binary uh, source, so there wasn't any, any way of... Any way of copying it over? Yeah, third party in it, yep. Um, what else was I going to say? So the... Uh, so if I mean, you... Around... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. If you're looking out on Amazon, the ones, basically, there's a whole set of them that are between $7, which is the ones we have, which is limited because it only has the SD slot and a single USB. There's the 4, which is called a backup device on here. That adds another USB 2 and a US, or no, two USB 3s and a USB 2 and a SATA. Or, uh, yeah, SATA. And yep. then the other ones... The... But I'll caveat that, too. The um, USB 3 does not get full speed because, once again, the processor and limited RAM cannot keep up. Correct. Or for the SATA. The SATA won't... That, too. Come close to the SATA. That's yeah. So... Although it's not bad because um, the, the GoFlex net, which is what I was dragging out, I was going to say, too, is a, a good option if you actually want to run off a real hard drive instead of USB. Um, it has a USB port in the back, but it'll actually boot off the hard drive. Um, yeah, I, you know, I was still getting 30 meg transfer speeds out of it, pretty regular. So it's not, it's not horrible, but you know, that drive's obviously capable of 100 or more. So, right. So and that's a sing, that's a single user pulling a single <laughs> stream, you know, or doing a single Correct. file copy uh, situation. Yeah, it's the same reason why you would want to use a Raspberry Pi for a firewall or or a file server, for that matter. It's not because it can't do it. It's because it's extremely slow to do it. Right. So. Yeah, I love these things. Yeah, and that's like, it was funny, because when you said you were looking for something to buy, I was uh, otherwise occupied at the time. Um, but I should have told you to look for one of these, because if you actually want to boot off the hard drive and do something you know, that requires a lot of storage but not necessarily a lot of space... Um, you know these these GoFlex uh, homes are are uh, a pretty good deal. They're hard to find cheap though, um, because a lot of them come with the hard drive, so you're paying for the hard drive. But on uh, eBay, I think we were looking, and they were like thirty five. It was a thirty five bucks, I think you could still get them. Um, yeah, I think so. And then you just add your own drive, so that's that's a pretty good deal. If you just, in fact, you can just use it without the hard drive. You can still boot off a USB. The bootloader that um, gets installed on there will first look at, it's either, it looks at the USB first and then the hard drive or vice versa, but at any rate, you can um, you can still use it as just a standalone plug like we are now and then add a hard drive later. You don't have to do it right away. So that's the free agent GoFlex Home? Yeah, the Home's the single, a single bay and then the Net is a dual bay and they're both hackable. Huh, okay. Because the... Let's see. I just saw the net for forty-five dollars on on eBay. Yeah, the net's well forty-six dollars. No, uh, so that's not too bad either. Then, so you get a dual a dual bay for a dual bay. Yep. And that's the same ARM chip type technology that we could. Mm-hmm. Kirkwood. Hack. Yep, one point two gigahertz, one hundred twenty gig of RAM. Uh, it's actually faster than the uh, mobiles that we have because those are only eight hundred. Yeah. And what's nice is um, a lot of the developers use this to compile on because you can create yourself a 2 gig swap file on spinning disk and you're not going to burn out a flash drive. So, oh, okay. yes, it takes forever, but you can compile natively on this thing because you can basically swap out as much RAM as you need. Sweet. That was actually one of the main reasons why I bought it originally is to actually compile some stuff, but the Arch Linux ARM team does such a good job. I haven't found anything I needed to compile yet. <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's funny. I'm looking on uh, 
on Amazon, they actually have the same thing that we have for $54 also listed. I know. It's nuts. It's not so be sure to, to watch and look, folks. There's that, and then there's that other site that we listed last week. And uh, it seems like everybody's blowing them out, so not really sure why. Yeah, man, for six or seven bucks free shipping, you can't go wrong just to goof around. I mean, you only need a one gig USB key and you can do a full install. I mean, it doesn't have to be bigger than that. Obviously, you want space if you want files and, and whatnot, but for a regular install, just to play around with the Linux box, you got. Six dollars and like you said, maybe five bucks and a four gig key at your local drug mart and there right. you go. <laughs> there you go. All set. That is if you haven't gone to a trade show. Now if you go to a trade show these days, you tend to get four eight gig ones um, handed to you. Yeah. Here you go. Here, here's all our media. Right. Okay, thanks. Let me uh, format that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which they all know you're gonna do anyways, but hopefully you'll look at it before you format it. Yeah, they put their name on it, so you gotta stare at it once in a while. Yeah, that's it. That too. So, um, so I got this up, and we were talking about before what I was gonna do with it, and I thought I was gonna put full bind on there. So the other thing that I was doing with Linux this week, actually, I should have said this too, but the other thing I was doing was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do about DNS and DHCP. And I've decided I'm going to write a script that converts my files from bind format to DNS mask format. Um, the only thing that I'm looking at and I'm not sure about is whether I can set DNS mask up to delay before it hands out an IP address on the DHCP side. That would be the only feature that I use that would be missing. Mm. Uh, because I figured out I can do all of the other features, you know, do all my technical, my DHCP assigned, but really static IP addresses for things around my house that need to be static, you know, file servers and stuff like that. Right. They're still DHCP assigned, but they're assigned by the MAC address so that those machines don't ever get a different IP address. Right. So I have a bunch of those. I have to, I have to work that out. And I was gonna, I was gonna I'm going to, I think I'm gonna write a script. I think. I'm going to look again to see it. I couldn't find a script that did it. I'm like, it's kind of a simple script to write, so I think I may write the script and put it out on on my GitHub profile because while searching for jobs, I noticed that a lot of jobs now, especially for the DevOps type stuff that I'm doing, what really, DevOps? Want, you to, <laughs> really <laughs> want you to have a profile on GitHub and have projects that you either started or are contributing to. Hmm. And I've only contributed to one, and that's SaltStack. But most of that's because most of what I do is for corporations, really large ones, and they don't let you put stuff out on the net. Yeah, that's usually frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So then are you going to run the DNS mask on one of the plugs? Uh, probably two of them. Oh, cool. Along with some other stuff. And then the reason why I'm hacking on the uh, MyCloud is because it has 256 megs of RAM whopping double the RAM. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got two terabytes of disk space, which is really the bigger reason. So I'm right. going to probably try to set up um, at least Gunnery on there. I'm going to move my Ansible installation over there, which isn't that big a deal. It's a matter of copying in some files, really. So I'm going to move and run Ansible off that and run Gunnery off that to do collections and stuff like that. And uh, that, will be, that will be quite a reduction. I actually had to go out and buy a power strip because I'm going to have all these little teeny power strips. <laughs> and I ran out of power. I ran out of plugs. Well, that would fit. Oh, uh, boy. So hopefully this new power strip will, will be enough. Yeah, you got to get one of those big, like, you know, I don't know, however many, 20 plugs on a 8-foot <laughs> stick, you know, and you just right. tack it up on the wall and plug them all in. Yeah. Yeah. I have something like that on the back of my on my desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full. Yep. I need to find different ones so I can so I can tack those up somewhere. But uh, yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, I set mine up. I got um, I did all the usuals. Made me the color of full prompt. Uh, set up my dynamic message of the day so it gives you all your server statistics and if there's any updates available and whatnot when you log in. Um, set up my usual lighty with PHP. And I think I was telling you, I was looking for some uh, flat file um, blog software. 
uh, to run on it since you can't. I mean, you could run a database, but it would be ridiculously slow. And on this particular model, you'd probably run out of RAM. Um, so I figured maybe that'd be something to do. To uh, I don't know what for. Just keep you know inside notes or information or something for around the house. If you wanted to do something, there's um, is it tiny wiki. There's a couple of wikis. There's one wiki out there that I can't remember the name of right now that is all JavaScript based. And the advantage to it is it keeps itself all in one file. So for what you're talking about, it would be great for just taking notes and doing I saw a couple. There. I saw a couple um and that was the require one of the requirements like you said it was it was Java and I was like, "No, I don't know if I wanted to do that directly." It's not Java, it's JavaScript. Oh. So it's not Java. There's yeah, so things. it doesn't matter because the uh, the web browser will take care of everything. Well, that wouldn't be too bad. Right. I know, and then, and then a lot of them use that new markup language, so there's no actual editor. You have to like write in a text file everything, and then you just kind of drop it in a folder, and then the software says, "Oh, new web page," and it puts it up. But yeah. I still want an editor. <laughs> well, and that's what this has. And then, oh, now I gotta go look it up. This has an editor. I think it's Tiny Wiki. It's Nope. Nope, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> I will try to look it up and, and have it for next time. Yeah. Well, that's not it either. But, you know, I got so many other machines running around, I don't actually have a, a direct use for it. I was just really curious to see if I get that SD to boot. That was my, my end goal. And um, it works, so. Oh, and, and, I would... and, oh go ahead. I'd say it, it actually, uh, it's cool, the bootloader will um, try to boot off of the SD and the USB, so I can plug in either or, and it'll, it'll load off of it, which is kind of cool. Oh, Okay. That's cool. That's very cool. You would think that would just be a small change for them. Small. Not a huge change. I was having trouble with my SD cards actually even seeing them <laughs> when I when I booted up into Arch. Matter of fact, it's in one of them right now. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, I can't remember because I know... The uh, you know after you actually get the OS booted, the OS has to have all the drivers for whatever the third party you know media is, and I know Arch loads the SATA because that's what makes the GoFlexes work. Um, but I don't know if they actually load any SD drivers. You might just have to do that by hand if it's not showing up. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Like I said, and I'll also figure out what the uh, what the other window is. Hey, somebody's calling. <laughs> uh, well, it's about that time. <laughs> it's about that time. Guess what? It really actually is about that time. We're just cutting it a little short this week because I'm going out of town tomorrow and I have all kinds of stuff I have to get done. And I guess Joe's not joining us because he never showed. That's okay. We'll give him a hard time about that next week. Yeah. I invited him. Just so everybody knows, I invited him. Um... <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else we were supposed to say before we go. I don't think so. Not at this point. I, I actually I did try because you were saying you um last week you set up the new Mint 17. Um, oh yeah. So mm -hmm. I installed it on a VM at work just to goof around with a little bit. Me. I don't know. I like a XFCE. The the cinnamon interface was just isn't. What's so different? I don't understand. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It just looks a little off or something. I don't know why. I'm picky. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. The new KDE 5 is looking pretty sweet. Um, Yuck. I know. I, I like KDE. <laughs> I don't, not so much that I'm going to switch, and no distro out of the box right now supports it directly. You can get a few, you know, third-party repo and whatnot, but... Um, I saw a couple screenshots. Actually, it was on that article you linked the uh, top yeah. five desktops that didn't have XSCE for some reason. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird too, actually. And and had X LXDE, which I yeah. don't think is a very good. I'd rather have LX 
Alex, uh, bleh, not Alex, XCFE, rather than right. Alex C, Alex D, whatever. Yes. Alex D is the one that comes standard with the Arch repo for right. the Pi. Right. If you go look for that. Yeah, and low for you know for low power devices, it's perfect, but not top five. No. So, um, that was the other thing I forgot. I did actually manage to successfully. You are seeing me live on uh, Linux Mint 17. I am actually running off my SSD too, which makes me very happy because things load so much faster. Yeah. Um, it doesn't boot that much faster, but everything else after it boots loads faster. Uh, and the SSD is actually functioning all properly and good, and it's all bootable. Um, I just have to change the timeout so that it doesn't wait so long before it decides to try to boot, because uh, it's actually the slowest part is the countdown of the 10 seconds before the boot menu expires and yep. kicks me on my way. It's like, <laughs> boot menu expires, boom, okay, everything's up. It's like, yep. wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. I reset mine for a lower as well. I'm like, I gotta, gotta lower that time because that 10 seconds now kills me. It never used to, but it does now. It's kind of funny. All right. Um, that's going to have to do it for us for this week because, like I said, I gotta go. So follow us on Twitter at Linux Install. Join us on the uh, Google Plus community at Plus Linux Install Net. And. Check out what Walt's doing over at geovec.com and my other site, devopsmastery.com. And uh, if you go look on the linuxinstall.net site, you will find a link to me being interviewed over on the server show last week, uh, which I totally forgot to mention last week when I did the podcast. Yep. So I'm making up for that now, and we'll make up for it next week. So go check out episode 15, and that's them interviewing, or, uh, well, Stephen from... The server show is interviewing me. The rest of his cohorts all backed out on him at the last minute. So it was just the two of us talking DevOps. So, yeah, uh, it was cool, though. Worth, oh, worth a it? listen. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, hopefully the DevOps people aren't going to kill me for it, but who knows. <laughs> it's uh, it's always the crapshoot with them. So um, check that out, and definitely go check out the other shows they have over at the Pod, PodNuts Network. They have my buddy Nightwise's podcast over there. I didn't realize he was over there. Uh, they have a, an Android show, which is pretty good. They have uh, some other Linux shows, which are decent, especially if you're a noob. If you're very new to it and some of the stuff that Walt and I are doing is talking way over your head, go check out some of their shows. They do a really good job of explaining stuff and how stuff works. And I think that's it. What should everybody go do, Walt? All right, go install some Linux. Have a nice week, everybody. See ya.